Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition, and Members of Parliament. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I also join uh, colleagues in this House to uh, congratulate uh, the Flying Fijians team for a sterling performance uh, early this morning. Uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, with the meager resources that we have, that took on uh, the, uh, one of the top seeded uh, teams in the world, and I think it's an excellent performance. Deputy Speaker, I wish to join my colleagues in Parliament in congratulating the President, His Excellency Ratu Peli Nadikau, for his excellent speech to open the second session of Parliament. Deputy Speaker, His Excellency the President is a model son of Fiji, a person who walks the talk. His leadership has been exemplary, and he has steered the country through difficult and trying times. Deputy Speaker, his Excellency the President alluded to a number of issues in his speech which colleagues in the Parliament have and will continue to deliberate on this, this week. Deputy Speaker, I wish to thank His Excellency for reiterating his call for One Fiji. Deputy Speaker, what is One Fiji and how do we get there? Deputy Speaker, One Fiji is an ideology established by our Honorable Prime Minister, Orange Bani Marama. It stands for Fiji, where we all are Fijians, where we all share a common identity, a destiny, and sense of belonging. Deputy Speaker, never before has any leader risen of ethnic divisiveness of past governments to champion and embrace this inclusive ideology. Our Prime Minister realized that without one Fiji, instability would persist unchecked and leaders will continue to resort. This is my time. This is my time. Honorable Member, you are speaking to me. Honorable Member, you are speaking to me. Our, our Prime Minister realized that without one Fiji, instability would persist unchecked and leaders will continue to resort to ethnic bloc votes to further their own selfish agendas. Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker, it is also quite rare to find a leader who is willing to embark on such a revolutionary campaign to inspire ideological change on the eve of an election. Oftentimes, leaders will compromise or give in to pressure for short-term gains to win an election. But our Prime Minister would not settle for anything less than one Fiji. He took a risk, and we are grateful that he stood by his principles. Deputy Speaker, he and the Fiji First government went into election with this ideology bundled into the 20th Constitution and presented it to the people of Fiji. Thousands of copies of the Constitution were distributed to the people, translated into Ethiopia and Hindi, as well as a version in Braille, to ensure, to ensure that everyone could understand this one Fiji ideology. The Fiji First government won overwhelming public support in a vote of confidence for the one Fiji ideology. And the faith was well placed as government has lived up to promises in May. Yes. Madam Deputy Speaker, this leads me to common destiny that we now all share Fijians. That destiny is one in which we all grow and live happily together, regardless of our ethnicity, religion, or location. I have no doubt that all, I have no doubt that all members of parliament agree with His Excellency the President, that we need to rally behind his constitution. Our, con our constitution gives us equal citizenry and provides us with a range of socioeconomic rights that are unprecedented in Fiji's history. It also recognizes unique aspects of the culture, customs, and traditions of the Itoka and Ratuman people. The Fiji First Party has taken the necessary steps to ensure that we move together towards our common destiny of one nation, one people, one Fiji. Yes. Yes. Deputy Speaker, this journey is only possible when you prioritize education. Education is one of the most important investments the government can make because it is the basis for providing opportunity. Opportunity for economic participation, opportunity for self-respect, dignity and recognition opportunity to realize our dreams. Deputy Speaker, education unlocks the hidden, unrealized potential of an individual. It is a tool for people to use to, use to realize their capabilities, create and access opportunities, live productive lives, and contribute to our national prosperity. 
Deputy Speaker, educating women and girls is particularly transformative for small developing societies because it also empowers them. It grants them dignity, respect, and earning potential. Education also allows them to make better decisions for themselves and for their families. Education combats poverty by providing skill sets that can generate income. If girls' education are not valued, chronic poverty will perpetuate across generations. As Deputy Speaker, it has positive implications in the long term as well. Deputy Speaker, when helping all Fijians realize their dreams and improve their lives, we need to be mindful that the circumstances should not dictate one's place in life. Past governments implemented policies that only realize the dreams of a select few, those born into privilege, those with right connections, those whose families could afford to support their futures, while others, those from rank and file, had to struggle to fight for few limited opportunities available to them. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Fiji First Government does not endorse any policy that gives the elite any advantage over their fellow countrymen. Our policies are for the benefit of all, children, all our children. We believe everyone's dreams that deserve to be fulfilled and that success in life should be determined on the basis of merit. Honorable Deputy Speaker, to deliver on everyone's dream, the Topaz and Tells was introduced in 2014 to unlock, to unlock the potential of those who had no way forward. Honorable Deputy Speaker, in 2013, in 2013, based on the previous financial scheme, we had a total of 5,434 students studying at various tertiary institutions under the old scheme, the Itokai Scholarship, the multi-ethnic PSA, etc. In 2014, in 2014, in 2014 on the new financial scheme, a total of 12,943 was studying at various tertiary institutions of a total budget of 83.5 million. This figure, Deputy Speaker, represents a substantial increase by 7,509 additional students studying at you know, various tertiary institutions. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Deputy Speaker, we also keep our ear to ground by listening to the people to ensure that no student is left behind. On this note, our Finance Minister, Honorable Ayaz Kayum, requested that we assist another group of children that have been forgotten by past governments. He has also agreed to provide substantial assistance to this group, which will be announced in the upcoming budget address. Honorable Deputy Speaker, in this journey to provide quality education, we all we must be cognizant of the new features of contemporary Fiji. Deputy Speaker, four decades ago, Employment opportunities were relatively high. Government was the major employer. IT development and social media were virtually absent. And we relied heavily on parental education to teach virtues and values. Honorable Deputy Speaker, <coughs> things have vastly changed over the last four decades. Namely, it is more difficult than ever to keep students in classroom. Honorable Deputy Speaker, while some on the other side want to live in the past and use outdated models and maintain status quo, I'm afraid that's not, op that's not an option for the Fiji First Government. Yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker, we have to deliver education and encourage learning using a new updated model of child development that reflects the changing times. We need to, one, ensure that upon completion of level of study, the children are strongly grounded in the equivalent subject matter. Two, ensure that those with an aptitude for skill training are then able to obtain skill training. Three, challenge students to think critically and develop entrepreneurial minds. Four, teach students the value of civic education. Five, ensure students develop holistically, become responsible citizens of the country, and take pride in national activities. Honorable Deputy Speaker, furthermore, the purpose of education must be to revisit in light of hardships and equity issues facing many students. This process must take into consideration special features of Fiji, such as our heritage, diversity, and the impact of climate change on our environment. Deputy Speaker, an empowering education is one that builds our human resources, resources that promote a productive society. We need to continue to learn, solve problems, be creative, and live together with nature in peace and harmony. When nations ensure that such an education is accessible to all, a quiet revolution is set in motion. 
The education becomes the engine of sustainable development, the key to a better world. Honorable Deputy Speaker, this quiet revolution is already underway in our country, New Fiji. One, we want our teachers to play their part, not only in teaching, but in ensuring that learning actually takes place. Deputy Speaker, our detractors, our detractors won't understand the difference between teaching and learning because they are stubbornly holding on to the input-based model of the past. Hence, Deputy Speaker, we now have got pillar one of educational reforms dealing with staff quality and delivery. Number two, number two, we want, our, we want the right content to be delivered to our schools and have accurate measures of our students' knowledge. We need to keep our students, parents, and labor market up to the speed on the progress of our students are making. This is the basis of pillar two of our reform in education. Three, Deputy Speaker, our schools, no matter where they are located, should have equal quality of infrastructure. Deputy Speaker, we will ensure that they have quality classrooms, abolition blocks, libraries, and adequate number of teachers. Deputy Speaker, in public, these glaring deficiencies aren't addressed, but in private, Many Fijians keep coming to us, thanking us for how we have started to improve the infrastructure in these islands and in the interior, including members from the other side. They'll come with their own notes, thanking us for what we are doing. <laughs> this is the basis for pillar two of the reform that we have. <laughs> Honorable Deputy Speaker, there are thousands, <laughs> there are thousands, there are thousands of students out in squatter settlements, interior and maritime islands, who have dropped out because they lost hope of acquiring any skill that would have earned them a decent living. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Fiji First Government has established technical colleges, campuses, three this year and seven more next year, to teach crucial skills to these students, as well as provide training opportunities for those bright students who qualify for trade qualification. Deputy Speaker, apart from year, one year long trade qualifications, in which we have put currently 1,230 students enrolled, we also offer short courses. Deputy Speaker, so far this year we have awarded 1,301 certificate of attainment to students who probably would have never dreamed of acquiring any formal skills training. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Deputy Speaker, these students don't have to pay a single cent to acquire certificate of attainment because government has allocated a separate stance of funding for short courses. Deputy Speaker, they too, they too have dreams to have a decent living. And just because they dropped out doesn't mean they don't have aspirations. Deputy Speaker, we are making those aspirations come a reality. Deputy Speaker, unfortunately, while some on the other side congratulate us privately, in public they are pick picking on mundane issues and use incorrect information to attack our initiatives. They have gone so far as to quote a 1981 report by Dr. Esther Williams on current education reforms. Deputy Speaker, that was 34 years ago. It is evidence that opposition continues to live in the past, 34 years ago. That's where they live. That's where they live. However, 34 years ago, too late. We have moved way ahead. And those, those, arguments don't hold, those arguments don't hold ground anymore, Deputy Speaker. They continue to talk about the past and live in the past. We talk about the future. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, that's where you live. Deputy Speaker, we have received support. We have received support from a very wide cross-section of stakeholders. The unions, the unions and fight by educational bodies, they all participated. They all participated in educational forums we held in Suva, Lotoka, throughout Fiji, and given us full support. Honorable Deputy Speaker, even the Fijian Teachers Association, led by Honorable Mika Lovere himself, supported us. There you go. And apologized to us. Apologized to us, saying we are sorry for our uh, uh, condemnation. They're not supporting. Here. Honorable Lovere sitting here, heads down, heads down, heads down. Honorable Deputy Speaker, on the same note, on the same note, another union leader, the General Secretary of Fiji, Trades, Fiji Teachers Union, went to an international forum a month ago in Canada and said our education minister is a bully. But, but what he wrote to us, but what he wrote to me is quite opposite. I have a letter here from the uh, union really? commending, commending the work that we have done. <laughs> commending the work. Commending the work. Oily. Oily. Double-faced. <laughs>
Honorable Deputy Speaker, you can see the true color of these leaders, so-called leaders, who now are backtracking on their previous statements of support. Yeah. Honorable Deputy Speaker, while we're embarking on these reforms, we can't be oblivious to the fact that our children are being put under increased stress. They need parental support and guidance. Deputy Speaker, there's no substitute to parental love and care. While we promise to create a school environment that will also take care of our children, we want our parents to spend quality time with our children at home. Deputy Speaker, spending as little as 30 minutes daily with a child can do wonders. Every child deserves at least that much affection from their parents. Deputy Speaker, we recently organized a very successful national discourse against suicide. We educated children how to prevent into getting things, doing things which are wrong, and encourage them to speak up for each other. We have made suicide prevention a key component of our education and prioritized mental health of our students like never before. Deputy Speaker, on Monday we also launched a song using our own Fijian artists, homegrown talents, to motivate our children to remain focused and study. Deputy Speaker, those who are stuck in the past will always take issue with new, improved policies designed for the present day. They will try their best to sabotage the reforms that we are doing, like what we saw yesterday when they showed their disappointment for not being able to stop the examination process. Sorry for that. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, they went to the extent, they went to the extent, they went to the extent of parading in public pages of confidential exam papers before students could sit for the exam. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Deputy, Honorable Deputy Speaker, they are playing with children, the future, they're playing with future of innocent children for short-term political gains. For short-term political gains. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Order. Order. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I will not let them uh, sabotage and succeed. Won't happen. Won't happen. Won't happen. They are using children. They are using children. Deputy Speaker, Fiji First Government, Fiji First Government is focused on future and is focused on de delivering a product that is tailored for the contemporary Fiji and Fijians. Deputy Speaker, once again, I wish to thank His Excellency the President for an excellent speech, and I join my colleagues in wishing him and his family the very best in years ahead. Thank you.